Hello, good afternoon to everyone and welcome to today's economic and capital markets briefing. We'll start off with the debt capital markets, a review of 2020 and what to look out for in 2021. So starting off, what do we expect this year? First, sustained low interest rates with the possibility of further monetary easing, even after last year's 200 basis points reduction in policy rates. We are guardedly optimistic that the economy will start to see a recovery, which may cause a slight uptick in inflation due to higher demand. But we believe the BSP will be alert towards any threat to our fragile growth. The BSP has been clear about utilizing tools as needed, whether rate cuts or further reductions to reserve requirements. This means 2021 will continue to be an opportunity to come to market, especially those who were hesitant last year. So for those who are waiting to pull the trigger, who still have fears or doubts, we urge you to take advantage of the current market, which has proven to be receptive and resilient. Investors are looking for an outlet for their funds with a sweet spot in the shorter end of the curve of up to three years in tenor. However, we are starting to see modest appetite for the five-year bucket, as long as investors are amply compensated. Lastly, we see that offshore bonds will continue to be a key alternative funding source, notably for larger, more well-known names, taking advantage of the size and tenor of the international USD market. We witnessed an exceptional year for the local debt markets with a record 1.2 trillion pesos in issuances, almost twice the amount raised in 2019. While the government took up the lion's share with two retail RTBs, including the 517 billion in August, and a second premium bonds in December, corporate issuances jumped 20%. And together with bank bonds, volumes improved 5%. The growth in private sector issuances compensated for the decline in bank lending, the first after many years of double digit growth. This reflects a contraction in the economy and understandably a more prudent approach in taking credit risk. We saw no loss of appetite for peso bond issuances. First Metro is proud to have delivered strong and wide distribution in spite of the pandemic, as we continue to advise our clients, both issuers and investors alike. Familiar faces came to market, the Ayala Group, the Aboibis Group, Philinvest, JG Summit Group, the SM Group, but we also brought a new name to the market with Del Monte's maiden issue, raising an amount well beyond initial expectations. The banks continue to tap the local debt markets, including both Metro Bank and PS Bank, raising a total of 14.2 billion pesos. The market was supported by an aggressive and timely action by the BSP, with reductions in policy rates throughout the year. And we believe the PSP has further room to maneuver, with inflation remaining manageable, notwithstanding the uptick of inflation in November and December, which we view as temporary and seasonal, considering the back-to-back -back typhoons and holiday demand. For 2021, we see inflation staying within the PSP's 2 to 4% inflation target, although we need to keep an eye on higher crude oil prices, which are now above $50 a barrel in anticipation of an economic recovery, which may push our inflation numbers slightly higher. With clear guidance and implementation of BSP policy easing last year, the yield curve shifted downwards with a slight steepening. We believe rates will remain low at current levels and will play within this range depending on how quickly 
economic recovery gains momentum and any further accommodative measures from the BSP. As mentioned earlier, we saw a surge in offshore issuances at close to $9 billion, double the volume of 2019. We expect the offshore USD market will continue to complement bond issues of our larger clients, although we believe overall amount will be lower than this uh, this year. Before we close this section, we share with you a snapshot of the US yield curve collapsing to near zero on the short end as of December 2020, supporting the case for offshore issuances. In line with monetary authorities worldwide, the Fed has indicated low rates will continue to prevail. Moving on to the equity markets, what do we expect for 2021? We see economic activity gaining more traction as businesses and society adhere and become used to health protocols, thus avoiding the need for broad quarantine measures. This should lead to a slight improvement in household income after a, such a devastating year, to be further boosted by election spending beginning the fourth quarter of the year. We believe fiscal stimulus will augment monetary policy. Remember that the largest budget uh, in history has been recently approved with three largest appropriations going to education, infrastructure, and local government. Now more than ever, true fiscal and infra spending is required to help jumpstart the economy. As markets stabilize, we are excited to see more REITs this year, following the first one from Ali this year. We are eager to work with our clients and bring both well-known names as well as less familiar ones to the market. REITs monetize assets and recycle capital in one of the most efficient ways possible. We also actively support the PSE's efforts in collaboration with the industry to encourage more listings of small and medium enterprises. This is a welcome initiative that is in line with our aim of financial inclusion and deepening of the equity market. The market has posted an impressive recovery since the March lows, with the index up 54% ending the year with 117 gainers, 142 losers, and 42 unchanged. This was just achieved in midst of foreign selling, with local investors now accounting for 70% of the volume, whereas foreign investors previously accounted for half. One of the most positive things coming out of our stay-at-home arrangement was to spur the local interest of investors helping propel the index higher. We attribute this phenomenon to the ease and availability of online investing, of which our own first metro securities is at the forefront, welcoming hundreds of new customers daily on its online platform. So check out firstmetrosec.com.ph. There were four new names to the equity markets last year, of which First Metro was proudly involved in two, Altus and Converge. But let's start off with Merrimark, which was the first listing of the year and received strong demand from retail investors, leading to the stock's meteoric rise. This was followed by the listing of Altus Property Ventures, a subsidiary of Robinson's Land Corporation. We arranged this listing by way of introduction, a unique manner of coming to the market. And we acknowledge the healthy returns thus far, with the share price rising 23% by year end. We all know of Ali's successful listing of the first REIT in the PSE, with its share price now 9% above its listing price, providing both capital appreciation and steady dividend yield. Finally, Converge jolted the stock market with its mammoth IPO one of the largest in the market's history. Their business became infinitely more relevant and vital in 2020, as many facets of trade, commerce, education, and society in general shifted online. 
Wrapping up the equity market, we share a quick snapshot of our peers in the region. While 2020p price earnings ratio looks lofty, 2021 earnings estimates will provide better value. Our next speaker will talk more about the stock market. But before I hand you over, we wish to extend our gratitude to our clients and partners for our rewarding and productive 2020, despite the trying times. We closed dozens of deals, both public and private sector clients, both debt and equity. As such, we've been recognized as the best investment bank in the Philippines by Finance Asia, which follows the same award received from Asia Money in 2019. We were also awarded the best M&A house in the Philippines by Alpha Southeast Asia, after having been accorded the best equity house by the same magazine in 2019. Thus, we remain confident that working together, we will overcome the challenges ahead. Thank you and good day.